Good morning, community of faith and friends. I'm Pastor Dave, and we are doing worship right here at the corner, so it's familiar to a lot of you today. And there's a lot going on, as you know, the, the air is hazardous outside in the Westland and surrounding area. And so I wanted to share a few announcements with you about that. We have two prayer vigils that are coming, one's right now and one that's coming up. So we have Stomp the Fire campaign, and that's happening right now. And I encourage you, no matter where you are, some of you are out of state and thinking, oh, things are fine here. But here on the West Coast, it's troubling. It's the, the, the fire is thick, the smoke is thick, and we need to come together as a Christian community and pray that the Lord bring an end to the wildfires, and we can do that right now. So continue to pray. Then we have another prayer vigil coming up, and it will be 40 days of praying for America. Do you think we need to pray for America? <laughs> yes, we do. And that will start on September 25th, which is a Friday, and it will run for 40 days and end it on voting day, which is November the 3rd. And to assist us, to bring us together in prayer, I would like to encourage you, wherever you are, let our office know, let me know, let our elders know. We'd like to mail you a prayer journal. It's a, a devotional, and I'm going to show it to you on screen. It's called this. We did this four years ago, and we're going to be doing it again. It's called Desperate for Change, 40 Days of Prayer for America. And that will start September 25th and go all the way through November 3rd. And during our prayer vigil of those 40 days, day two, which is the 26th of September, we invite you also to participate with the world. Christians from all over the globe are going to be praying for uh, our nation together. And many are going to be coming and walking right downtown Washington, D.C. to pray for America through, you probably have heard of him, his name is Franklin Graham. So we can participate on that day, noon on Saturday, September 26th to pray. So those are two things that we can do. And then during my message, I'm gonna share four things that we can do as an act of love for our community right now. So as we continue our service and we begin, I'd like to uh, start with the invocation and a prayer and then, uh, and then sing. So let's begin. Our service begins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all God's people said, Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we know that you have a plan for us that you have a purpose for us. And we know that you have come to save us. You brought your son to us 2,000 years ago and you continue to have the saving plan for humankind. And Lord, we need to be saved. We need to be saved from ourselves. And so Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit would come in, that we may sense your presence that we may receive and say yes to your presence now, that we, no matter where we are, among many smoke-filled places, that we may receive you today. Hear us as we sing about your love. In Jesus' name.
we get to hear God's word together. So I invite you, if you don't have it in front of you yet, we invite you to go wherever you are, in your living room or in your family room, in your kitchen, grab your Bible and open to two places. And we're going to hear, first of all, from one place in scripture that talks about love and defines love from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And then also find your Bibles and then just place uh, place something right there so you can flip right to it very quickly in Matthew chapter 5. And we're going to hear about God's love proclaimed by Jesus. And so before we hear Jill share the word, let's pray. I invite Jill to come up and stand pretty close to me at least. And I'd like to pray for her and pray before we receive the word. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. And you know we need rain. We know that we need you. And your word this morning is like rain that so, so much we need. May we receive it today with joy. And Lord, that you'd help us to know that the source of love is you. And that you've called us, Lord, to be filled, overflowing with your love. To share it with one another in this world. So hear us. Help us to hear you now. In Jesus' name. Our first reading today comes from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 13. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Our second reading today is Matthew 5, 43 to 48. Love for enemies. You have heard it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it is children's chat time, and so if you have your kids at home and they're awake and ready, you can bring them to the screen. How do people know that we, that call ourselves Christians, that we really are Christians, followers of Jesus? How do people know? Is it when we go to church? Is it when we wear nice clothes and go to a place called the church? Is it, what is it that makes us look like we're Christians or behave like Christians? What is it? 
Well, Jesus tells us. God's word tells us. And we can tell others that we are Christians by our love. By our love, that's right. And we know that love originates from God. From God. So kids, I want to share with you a illustration right here. And it comes right from scripture in this verse. And I want to share this scripture with you before I show it to you. Listen to what this says. Great place. If you want to have your Bibles and underline this about God's love, it comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 12. It says this. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else. You hear that? May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else. Love it. So this illustration is all about allowing God's love to overflow. So here you go. Da 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 da. I have it marked too, so right here. You see this in your camp? It says, the water is God's love. The vase today is to be God. And the thing that falls really short is that God is inexhaustible. He's something that I could not hold in my hand. And God's love is great. And the water is God's love being poured out. So here's symbolic of God's love. And then we have this right here. And this is symbolic of us. Notice very clearly that this cup is very small, comparatively speaking. And notice that this, being the vase represented of God, is full of his love. And notice this, representing me and you, is empty. Now, oftentimes, you and I try to be loving to others when we're empty. And so, the only way that we can as Christians, act in loving, to do love, is to be filled with God's love. And I say, God, fill me with your love. And we can pray that together. And so, right here, ha, see if I can do this. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. So, here we go. And this is the world. This is us. And this is in the world. And we're in the world, right? And God fills us with his love in the world, see if you can see this. And God, through Jesus Christ, poured out his love on us. Now I know you can't see it, but in this bowl that represents the world because God came into this world through Jesus Christ, he poured out his love on us. And when he pours his love upon us through Jesus, Jesus didn't just come to fill us with his love so we can just be full of it. <laughs> no, Jesus came in that we too may be overflowing with love and not just keep his love to ourselves, but to be overflowing in love. So in here that you can't see, see it's kind of dripping right now, that's a good thing. And this bowl is just overflowing. And so as you see this, I'm pouring into this cup that you can't see. And in this bowl, which is a love, it just continues to overflow. And guess what? It overflows in the world in this way. So you just have to believe me. It's being poured, that little cup that's us, our vessel, is overflowing. And this bowl is getting filled up from the overflowing of our little cup, which is us. It just keeps on going. You get the point? God's love, the origin of love is God. He pours out his love through Jesus. And we open our lives and say, Lord, just pour your love in us. We do that by our faith, our, our faith in the Lord Jesus saying, Lord, I believe in you. I know that you're with us. You died and you rose for us. Lord, fill me with 
with your power. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. He does, but he doesn't fill us just so that it's for us. He fills us to overflowing that the world may encounter his love. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Now that I've gotten everything wet, ha! I want to introduce to you our sermon song. It's called, They'll Know We Are Christians by Our Love. And I want to share with you where that comes from. And it's a, a beautiful piece of scripture. And it comes from this. It comes from John 13, 34 and 35. It says this. A new commandment I give you, Jesus said, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And so with those words that Jesus spoke comes the motivation or the inspiration of this song. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Let's sing. by how much you give? No, they'll know that you're Christians by our love. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we can't open the Bible without seeing the evidence of your love, which is your son, Jesus. And sometimes it's not enough for us. We can know the truth, but not live it. And so, Father, we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, that you may fill us by the power of your Holy Spirit right now, because at, at this time, many of us are feeling empty. And so, Lord, supernaturally, Lord, come and aid us, fill us with your love, that it may be overflowing, that we may share your love with others. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, it's fire season. They say that around the mountainous areas where there's lots of trees and shrubs and things like that, there's a fire season and we're in it. And it's multiplied by a thousand now, especially throughout California, Oregon, and Washington and other places too. And you don't have to live right in the area where there's fires to be affected by it. Why? Because we get this called the wind and the atmosphere that blows all the smoke right to you. And so I've, I saw on the map, and I, maybe you saw it this morning, that the smoke 
that comes from California and Oregon and Washington from the wild, wildflowers, you'll see on radar, not on even radar, just from satellite shots, you'll see this huge plume of smoke passing through the mountainous regions as you're going east and all the way into Michigan. It's incredible. So we got a lot going on here that requires God's mercy and God's intervention. Can we say amen to that? Amen. amen. And when there is fire, you know, I remembered in grade school, there was like three things you're doing. If you know you encounter fire, you do what, what, what was it? You, you stop. Then what? Draw. Draw. I just draw. I'm not going to draw, otherwise you won't see me. But you stop, you drop, and then you roll, right? So today, I'd like to say, share with you four things that we can do as Christians, as a community, no matter where you are. It doesn't have to be that you live right within the smoke like we are in Westland and the surrounding areas. But you can do this right now, and I'm not saying stop and drop and roll. But I'd like to share four things of way for us to be able to be activated by the love of God to do what God wants us to do in the midst of what's going on right now. You see, it's, it's, it's not just a theological thing. It does just say, yeah, God is love. Because we know scripture says God is love. In 1 in first John chapter 4, it talks about God's love. And in chapter 3, that God is love. And then it also says that God showed and demonstrated his love that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. He demonstrated what that love looks like. And then other scriptures says that God demonstrated his love by laying down his life for us, sacrificially for us. So not only is God love, God love incarnate is Jesus Christ, who then demonstrated, showed, he proved his love. Finally, in God's death on the cross, Jesus Christ died on the cross for us and while we were still sinners, that we may be forgiven only by the grace and mercy of our God. That's God's love. That's proof of God's love. That's evidence of his love. And then God says, well, now that you know what love is, and now that you've experienced it and it's been demonstrated through Jesus, he then says, guess what? I, <laughs> it's like tapping on you. Okay, it's your turn. He empowered the church, the body of believers, to go and be love, to share love, to allow others not only to know the love of God that's found in Jesus Christ, but also to show it. And so, remember this story? It's John chapter 13. What did Jesus do? He's with his disciples on that day. It was the most important night because Jesus, it was his last supper, that last meal, and he was sharing with his disciples what was most important. Have you had those days where you sit down with your kids or your grandkids and you want to share with them what's most important? I had that encounter. I was able to hear that from my dad who passed away several weeks ago and had a, a memorial service for him at Tahoma National Cemetery over in Maple Valley, Washington. And we had this, this service for him. And, oh, it's so meaningful for our family to, to have that closure to come and to celebrate his life. But during those last days of my dad's life, he would let us know in word, as well as indeed what was most important to him. <laughs> and he definitely shared it by what was not important. Every time we went to visit my dad, he would continue to give us things. Why? Because those things were so important to him. He didn't need them. He couldn't take them where he was going. And he just kept on giving us. So whenever we came, I felt like I needed to bring a trailer with me because he continued to give us things when we came in there. But what he did, that was something out of his generosity. And we think, oh, that was important. No, what was important is the, the love that was in his heart that was poured in through Jesus Christ. And what was more, most important was this uh, residency he was going to because he knew he wasn't a resident of this earth. He was going to be a resident of heaven where he belonged. And 
he said, I can't wait to go. Almost every time I went to see him for, that, for those last two years, he said, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready to go. And he would convey to us what was most important for sure. And in the same way, in a much more dramatic way, that's what Jesus did with his disciples so that we may know it. And we hear this in all the Gospels. He gathered with his disciples. He shared his love. He shared the, the teachings about, hey, as I've loved you, I want you to love one another. This is the way that I want you to show your love by following my commands and doing what I've said and living the way I did and follow my example. But then he went a step further just to share. He said, you know, now that you've eaten this meal with me, and shared the Passover. And then on that Passover, he, he, he fulfills it saying, this, this bread, my body. This wine is my blood. Shed for you for the forgiveness of my sin, for your sins. And then during that encounter, that incredible meal, where the most important things were being said, Jesus showed, didn't just say it, he showed him that. And he put like an apron around, apron around his waist and he got a bowl and he started washing his disciples' feet. Could you imagine that? I mean, symbolic of that time to wash your disciples' feet was a, it was the, something a servant would do. And our King Jesus, Master, Deliverer, Savior, came and washed his disciples' feet. Would you let Jesus wash your feet? I mean, Peter was thinking, oh, I don't know, I should be doing that. And Peter said, no, I, I don't want you to do that. And Jesus said, you need to let me wash your feet. And Jesus knelt down and he washed his disciples' feet. And after that was done, then Jesus said, like an illustration, like a children's chat, but way better. He said, just as I have washed your feet, you are to do the same. Just as I have loved you, the full extent of my love, you are to love one another. And so Jesus is the source of God's love. And he poured it out on all of us as he lived and he died and he rose again. And for us is to receive and say, Lord, I am empty. I am dirty. I am needing you. Lord, come fill me completely. Lord, I repent. I need you. Forgive me of my sin and make me new. And I pray that you do that now. And as we are filled with his love in that way, he never fills us with his love just to have it close to the top where it's just stayed with us. And that's probably one of the biggest errors of the church these days. And it's not God's error. It's not Christ's error. It's not the Holy Spirit's error. But often saying, oh, we have enough. We'll just keep everything to ourselves. But God has made us and made his church in such a way that our love for God would be overflowing. And so our prayer is saying, oh, we're good, we're, we're good enough. No, say, God, continue to fill us up, overflowing. Why? So that his love would overflow from us to this world to people are in need. Do you think that's important right now? Online, I hope you say yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's no greater time right now. Look what's going on. I mean, a lot of people say 2020 is a forgettable year. I mean, I just got to say this here. Just uh, You're going to hear almost every service, right? 2020, the pandemic, COVID-19, how it has absolutely changed the world. And what was one event that just happened that changed our nation? 9-11. That was yesterday. 9-11 changed everything to the point where you could say, where were you at 10 o'clock in the morning on 9-11? And most people that were alive, they won't, if they, unless they were not born yet, they'll be able to say, I was here. And they could, they could tell you what they were eating, if they are eating Kellogg's uh, frosted flakes, or they'll tell you exactly what's going on. And they'll be able to tell you exactly what that's what's going on. And I mean, listen, what's going on in 2020 right now? We would know. You could just say, oh, I remember right when that happened. 
I was at work or I was at home and I had to stay home. I couldn't go to work and church ended. No more on-site worship and everything changed and wearing a mask and social distancing. Washing your hands, we've become very good at that. And it continues. And even now, on September, is today September 13th? 13th. Oh, excuse me, two days away. 13th. It's much the same. We have COVID-19. And we have the social distancing. We're still wearing our masks. We still have to be careful, right? And then we have the, um, the social unrest right now social justice issues and it's interesting right now that we hopefully will not learn from the world because how is the world in our society in our cities our own residents how are they wanting to get social uh, justice are they coming in like this and saying like this with open hands no they're seeking it out with fists it's like this and we see it with fists people seeking justice with their fists with um, violence with riots it's just absolutely absurd and we see this going on and that continues to persist and important we see this daily ever since the first outbreak of violence and it's been going on and now if that wasn't enough during our fire seasons within a week we have fires all over the place Estacada really close and Moala and Calacamas and the fire seem to be encroaching on the city of Portland and we are reminded of it with oppressive smoke and so the, uh, the right now the air index is over 400 it's nuts it's crazy do you think we need love do you think we need God yes we do is there something that we can do? Yes, we can. And so we, knowing that the source is God and that God came to show his love through Jesus for us to receive. And it was God's plan, is God's plan, that his love is poured out on his church, the body of Christ, which is, which is us. Not to keep it, not to be gatekeepers of it, but to be overflowing so that this world. So what can we do? What can you do? What can I do to showcase, to show forth the love of God that's found in Christ Jesus? What would it be? So I'm not going to give you the, the stop, drop, and roll. That's three. That's not four. So I'd like to share these with you. They're very simple. And the inspiration is from God's word. So before I give you those, I just want to share these great words of love. Ah, I couldn't stop all so excited because if you're looking for the source of love and how God showed his love, it's all over scripture. 1 John 4, 7 through 10. The source is like the noun, God. And what God does is that verb of what he does. Listen to this. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. And whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. And this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that he might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also need to love one another. 1 John 3.16, you guys know John 3.16, but 1 John 3.16 says this, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Oh, this looks good. 1 John 4, 19, one of my favorites. I love this one. We love because he first loved us. And why we love, I shared with you in the children's chat. Jesus said, a new commandment I give you. Jesus, boy, he's tapping on our shoulders. He's maybe sometimes kicking us in the rear end. <laughs> love one another. As I have loved you, you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you... Go to church, give an offering, because we love one another. And Ephesians 5, 1, I love this one. 
called to follow Jesus' example. Follow then God's example, therefore, as, God, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Ah, here's, here's a good one, too. 1 John 3, 18. Dear children, or dear friends, let us not love with words or speech. That's a good one to say to preachers. <laughs> but with actions and in truth. And Ephesians 4.15 says, speak truth in love. Okay, all right, you've been waiting for it. Not stop, drop, and roll, but here's four things that we can do to let the love of God overflow through us. A couple of them. One is this. This is just a good thing to say. Be wise. So any of you here say what? Be, Be wise. wise. So for us here in the Northwest, where the level of the and the air index is over 400, don't go outside and go running. <laughs> don't go walk. Go walk outside. Don't take your dogs for a walk. It's just stay inside. I mean, for me, I had to go inside and to be wise is also look for those areas where bad air comes into your house. It's almost like saying when Satan is around, just trying to shoo Satan away, get him out of here. It's like tape up the doors, put a towel by the entrance door so you keep your, your, your house secure without all this smoke going in. Also, one thing I, I've heard about is the fans. Make sure that you know what to do with that. Some have said, you know, if you turn on your fans, uh, that's a good thing. It recirculates your air. But be careful. Learn. Find out about that because it might be drawing in the bad air from outside. So be careful. Be wise. And if you have questions, check out some of the resources and experts so you know how to keep your house safe. But stay inside. And if you need help and you need assistance, this is called being wise. Please call the church. Please call um, right here. You know our phone number from the church. Go to the website at cofaith.net and look, look that up and give us a call or give me a call or look up one of our council members or our elders. Let us know. Don't do this. It's a long oh, good. There's a lot of people a lot worse off than me. Have you heard that before? <laughs> But there are things that we could do, or even just getting advice. What do we do next? This is the opportunity where we can share with one another. So be wise, pick up the phone, get help that's needed. Be wise. Number two, what we can do, be prayerful. Can you say that with me? Be prayerful. I mean, Jesus, when he was on earth, he said, pray. It's not to be an idle activity. It's an active word. It's a loving word to pray, to pray for ourselves and to pray for others and to pray for this world. And I gave you two opportunities to snuff out the fire campaign that we need to be doing right now, to pray that the firefighters and the first responders can get a handle on the fire and Lord would bring rain and bring an end to this fire and the smoke. Because a lot of people are in danger right now. People have been evacuated. This is oppressive smoke right now. So snuff out the fire campaign involves all of us. Pray. Pray for our first responders. Pray for our firefighters that they would be effective and strong. And pray for one another during this time frame. Pray unto the Lord that he would snuff out the fires. Number three. So one is be wise. Number two, be prayerful. And three, yes, be helpful. Reach out in love to provide financial assistance, supplies that are needed, clothing, shelter. I'd like to share with you right now. I, I have staff get this for me so I can share with you. Oh, where did it go? Here it is. So I want to share with you a resource. So if for those of you that are watching and are thinking, oh, where are some resources I want to give? I want to be able to even provide shelter. I, I want to be able to point people in the right directions to get clothing and food and shelter. I want to give this to you, so please listen to this right here. Rolling Hills has a great 
um, resource. They have this huge lot, a huge parking lot, and they're welcoming RVs onto their parking lot. So if you have an RV or something like that, you can park it there and you can have a place of safety there right at Rolling Hills. So think of www.rollinghills.org in uh, backslash fire. And they have a food pantry there. They'll provide a warm meal for you, shower and laundry. And uh, they have the, all these things provided. And then if for, for, for those of you who want to go to Clackamas Crisis Response, you could go to there as well. Clackamas.us backslash DM backslash volunteer. And so we have resources here. We can help right now. And so I, I encourage you to keep your uh, eyes peeled, keep your ears to the ground so that you may be able to assess people and, and those needs so we can point people in the right direction. You might not be able to give assistance yourself, but you can point people in, uh, in a direction that would be really life-saving, life-giving. And so think of rollinghills.org, think of what they could provide and let us know if there's some needs as well so we can be of help and be loving toward one another. And the last one is this, be encouraged. God is in control, okay? God is sovereign. I mean, one of the greatest Bible stories, and we see this through, I think of God in the storm and and God was out on a boat with his disciples and it became turbulent and the disciples became worried and they go, God, ah, Jesus, don't you care for us? And Jesus gets out of the slumber of his boat and he just says, in a word, stop, be still. I mean, we have a God that wants to still the storm on us. He might see the storm that continues to rage, but God can, start, can bring a stillness to the storm that rages with the anxiety and the fear of your heart. So I encourage you today, be encouraged by God who is in control. He is sovereign. He is the one that created in the heavens and the world and the earth with a word. He, he, Jesus came and he called in the storm. And remember that great story of the fire? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel, right? And they are faithful unto God. And they were thrown into the furnace. And guess who was in the furnace with them? Right in the midst of that. Not outside, not above it, but in the furnace was Jesus. And in the same way, in the flames, in the smoke, in what's going on with COVID-19, with the fires and the flames and the smoke, and with the riots and the protests and all that's going on, we can say, that God is with us now. Believe it. He is here incarnate. He's with us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Claim that today. Be encouraged. God is with us. Let's call on him. So those four things, be wise. And if you're looking for wisdom, call someone, call an elder, ask for people of, that can give you guidance in the midst of this. Be prayerful. We're having some prayer campaigns. Snuff the fire campaign. We can all pray together. And coming up, pray for our nation. Wow, we need to pray for our nation. That starts September 25th. It goes for 40 days. We invite you to be prayerful. Be helpful. Find ways that you can be helpful. Call on a friend. Call on those people that you know might be threatened to see how they're doing. And four, be encouraged. In Jesus' name, let's go out. Wow. We know many things matter. You matter to God, and love matters. He's called our church to show it, not just to preach about it, but to show it. Let's do that together. In Jesus' name, amen. So today, before the prayers, I'd like to share with you um, the confession. And, you, and I'm just going to read this, and as you're, with, uh, for, as you're with someone at home, right here, I'd like for you to be able to take this in faith. They are the words of the Apostles' Creed. And I'd like to share these with you. It is a proclamation of faith in the God who is sovereign, a God who is our Savior. So let's make this profession of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit 
and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. Let's take item number three of what we can do, or number two, by being prayerful. So let's come together and pray. Heavenly Father, we are in need. People have been sequestered to their home for months. And now they're sequestered even more of not being able to go outside because of the oppressive smoke that's so dangerously high in the Northwest. And if that's not enough, then there's the oppressive smoke that comes with the heat of the fires that comes and encroaches on property and homes and cities and towns. Oh, Father, we ask for your help. Snuff out the fires, Lord. Bring the rain. Take out the, take out the flames and the fire and the smoke. May it dissipate soon. And Lord, we pray for safety. Lord, help us is even as we pray together right now to be wise in the things that we do. Help us to seek shelter in our homes and seek shelter in you, O oh God. Oh God, I pray that you may also stir us up to be overflowing with your love, O oh Lord, your sacrificial love, that we may love on others financially by a phone call, by sharing resources to help people in need at this time. Father, we can't go another day just remembering in our nation of 9-11 and then we think of 2020, things that will always be memorable. But we look and we never forget what took place in 9-11 of the lives lost by terrorist attacks. And we think of the sacrificial duty and love of um, those that were first responders and those of the fire department going up the Twin Towers and trying to save people's lives. We'll never forget, Lord. And so now, Lord, as we have, have another event that we'll never forget, we'll never forget 2020. Oh God, in the midst of it, help us to see you. You're with us. In the midst of it, Lord, empower us to be overflowing with your love to help people in need today, this week. And Lord, we confess you as our Lord. And we confess it by the prayer that you taught us to pray as we pray from our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to share this verse as a benediction today. It comes from the children's chat. It comes from 1 Thessalonians 3.12. And as we know what's important to God, it matters to God to be loving. Listen to Paul's word to the church, which is us. It says this, May the Lord now make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's sit.
expressions of love to our family on my dad's passing. Uh, right before the service, someone had shared me just a text message with scripture, just made me tear up, and I was just so thankful for um, the love that was expressed to me and to my family by our staff and by our congregation in that way. I just want to say thank you, and that's what God wants us to do in this PS as I'm sharing with you. He wants us to show forth our love for one another, overflowingly from God's love. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you, God.